Hello and welcome to Portfolio Matters Share Talk, where Keith is going to talk to us about sentiment. Before he does that, I shall read the disclaimer. Everything discussed during the Portfolio Matters podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. Listeners should be aware that we will be discussing securities that we own or have a financial interest in. Please do your own research or consult a professional investment advisor before making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. A full disclaimer can be found at the end. Thank you, Richard. Take it away, Keith. Thank you, Richard. Okay, so today we will be discussing the Egyptian gold miner sentiment. Now, this is an interesting recovery play. Sentimen has a history of mine problems and mine problems which got very substantially worse um, in October and December last year. And frankly, the Q4 2020 update it put out last week was a truly awful. Um, but it now has a plan which will involve three years of capital expenditure to get to a stable production in the future. Now, if you believe they can execute that plan, then this may well be an opportunity. So sentiment produces up to 500,000 ounces of gold per annum from the Sakari mine in Egypt. So it's a big producer. Market cap is 1.37 million currently but it has a history of production problems. And when we get through to the pictures of the Sakari mine, I hope you will start to understand why that is the case. Um, so in October, the 2nd of October, it announced that radar had picked up instability in the rocks on one side of the open pit mine, and that it was going to have to stop mining that sec section which was a high grade section of the mine and continue mining at a much lower grade section of the mine. And it cut production forecast by 8%. Now, the, um, the positive news is that it produced a truly dreadful Q4 update and the share price actually rose. So the question is, is all the bad news in the price? So, we look at positives and negatives of the company it now has a mine development plan and it is um, contracted capital mining which is a uk listed company to remove a load of waste rock from the security mine over the next three years the cost of 595 million so they're investing in the in the mine mm -hmm. they also fended off a takeover bid in early 2020 at a price of one pound 26 so which is above its current share price. So, you know, if the share price were to collapse further, you wonder whether their bidders would emerge. It promises to return to its previous 500,000 ounce per annum production by 2024. And the big question is whether we believe that they can do that without further problems. Now, they've got a new CEO and they are promising to go for value over volume and invest in the business so that it is stable going forward. Um, that said, it's now a very high cost producer. So the um, because of the mine problems, the all in sustaining cost has crept up and in Q4 was an astonishing $1,600 an ounce. So I mean, the positive side of that is if the gold price goes up, then that has a massive effect on sentiment's uh, profitability. Yeah. Um, given the price, the fact that the share price rose on all the bad news, you have to ask, is all the bad news in the price? And historically, it's paid out special dividends and has been a good yield investment. The negatives, there have been serial problems and has an unpleasant history of missing production forecasts. The all in sustaining cost is steadily creeping up. And in order for this to be a good investment, you have to believe that they will get production and the costs under control. Yep. 
And that will take three years, three years in which the production will fall and cost will rise. The other thing is that they have an Egyptian with the agreement with the Egyptian government with in profit sharing. So historically, that was 55% profits go to sentiment, 45% go to the Egyptian government. But from July 2020, it's 50-50. So their share of profits has actually fallen and will be at that level going forward. Okay, so there's some mining terms that um, I had to educate myself on and are relevant to sentiment. So the all-in sustaining cost aims to calculate what the sustainable cost of the gold production is. So it includes the cash cost of mining and processing. It contains the, the uh, costs of maintaining and sustaining operations. In the case of sentiment, that is key because that's the cost of stabilizing the mine and the open pit. Um, expo exploration, expenditure, and GNA. What it excludes is financing costs and tax. So it doesn't include everything. But then sentiment is net cash. So it's uh, financing costs are low. Um, another term you should know is dilution. And this is particularly relevant to the underground operations at uh, Sukari. And that is the amount of waste rock that gets mixed in with the ore and goes to processing with it. So the more di the dilution, the more you are needlessly processing waste rock that contains no gold. So you want dilution to be as low as possible. The other term that you need to know is the strip ratio. Now the strip ratio is the ratio of waste rock that needs to be removed to get to the ore. And if you look at this chart, you see in pit A, the early life of a mine, you don't need to remove much waste rock to get to the ore. So your strip ratio is one to one. But as the mine gets deeper, you need to remove a lot more waste rock to get to the same ore and your strip ratio massively increases. So in pit B, the strip ratio is 16 to one. So what you're seeing here is why old mines have steadily rising all in sustaining costs. Mm. Now, if you stand up close to your screen, you'll see what the problem is with Sukari. The rock is friable. And so if you look at the picture where I've highlighted the green arrows, you'll see landslides. You'll see the tears collapsing. And what has happened in October was radar picked up instability in one of the walls of the mine. And they've had to stop mining that section and start mining another section. But you can see the reason why you've got ongoing pro production problems here is the rock is friable. And I think, um, I think Keith, that's the left, as we look at it, it's that left hand sort of large mounds of material on the left hand side, I think. I think um, they're something that you refer to later on, aren't they? With the removal that's, of the excess material. Yes, that's right. But the Sakai mine is a huge resource. So you can see here um, current and future operations. So they've got large underground resources and which can be developed further. So they currently have the open pit and they're developing Amun and Patar, but they have Cleopatra on the left and they've got Horus Deep, um, which to explore further. Mm -hmm. So this um, shows you um, where they're uh, planning to explore. So this mine could have a much longer life. Now, this is the track record, and you can see that production peaked in 2016, 2017, and since then has been declining. And obviously this was before, this is from the 2019 annual report, and that this excludes the problems that they had in 2020. But the point to take away from this is that they were forecasting that in 2020, they'd be producing 500,000 ounces. So 
going forward, you'd hope that they can get back to that level. Now, what happened? So in 2019, they were forecasting that they would produce 510 to 540,000 ounces. They cut that in October when the, on the mine stability and they actually produced 452,000 ounces. So that is a 14% drop on forecast, but also all of that came from the open pit. The underground produced as normal. So there's actually a 17% decline in production from the open pit, right. which is very substantial. So now they have contracted capital mining to remove waste rock at the cost of 595 million over the next three years. And the diagram in the center shows what they're going to do. If you follow my cursor, this area here, they are going to strip away all this waste rock that is not all and is causing instability in the mine. So you will see from here, this is from the 2019 annual report, that the all-in sustaining cost has been steadily rising. And in forecast for um, 2020 was 1, 000, just over a thousand. Yeah, so it's steadily rising. Now, this is the January 19th update, and it was really, really bad. Frankly, when I saw this, my heart sank and I thought the share price would absolutely tank. You'll see here that gold production fell by 47%. The gold sold fell by 33%. The, the, um, the grade mine, so the amount of... Um, gold in the rock fell by 32 percent so they were mining much lower grades and they actually um so they increased the amount of my um material mined by 21 percent but they massively the quality of the rock massively declined and as a result the costs shot up from 961 dollars an ounce to 1600 so, you know, shocking, frankly, but then the share price rose. So is all the bad news in the price. So this is guidance going forward. You see that these are the revised um, guidance. So guidance for full year 2020 was down to uh, is out, the outcome was 452,000 ounces. But in 2021, they're forecasting that to fall further to 400 to 430, and then it slowly recovers to get to, to back towards 500,000 ounces by 2024. And in addition, they're forecasting that the all in sustainable cost will rise. So you're going to have a couple of bad years here where you have lower production and higher costs. And this um, just backs that up. So, you know, you're hoping that once this mine development plan is being, being completed, that production returns to half a million ounces per annum and the all in sustainable cost comes back down again. So in three years time, it could be a much more profitable company than it's going to be, where it has been in 2020, and it will be over the next couple of years. It also has a few growth opportunities, but that is not um, the immediate problem. The immediate problem is Sakali. So these are results, but again, you know, this isn't the problem. The problem is what happens going forward. Um, the only takeaway from this is that it's got net cash. So, okay, given that the um, they've got this, this sort of substantial structural problem with their mind that they need to resolve. Yeah with which is obviously subject to quite a significant execution risk is one yeah. better putting one's money in a different gold miner well the thing is richard how much of that is in the price i mean the share price is halved you know yeah. you don't get something for nothing you know there's there's the question is whether the risk reward um trade-off 
is good at this point. And they've got new management. And actually, if we go to this chart here, which shows the dividend history, you'll see that in 2017, 16, 17, they paid out very large special dividends. And the question is, should they have just invested in the mine then? And, you know, so if going forward, they're having a new management and they're going to prioritize uh, the mine development plan and sustainability, then this could be a credible turnaround story. But you're right, it's a turnaround story. Okay. So this is the share price. And you can see that having shot up to 230p in August, it then cratered in October when um, this um, in mine instability appeared. And since then, it staged a little bit of recovery. But you know, going forward, you would hope if they can execute on this plan, they can get back to where they were. And then you're talking about pretty much 100% return. So that is the, the reward if you believe that the uh, recovery plan is credible. Um, so that's it, really. Sentiment is, um, it's got its problems, but its value, it currently, the question is, do you think that the mine recovery plan is credible and can be executed without a, further a, setbacks? It's a geared, geared play on the price of gold, Keith. Yes. I should also say that I own a load of this, which I bought when the price crashed on so about flat. Okay. I, okay. Suspect, I suspect it's one of those stories where the, um, the, the new management team will actually be able to uh, sort out the structural issues and it will get to back to production. And um, yeah, over the next few years, the price will, if all other things being equal, the, the finances of the business will return to what they ought to be. But there's a lot of hard work to be done between now and then. Well, <clears throat> that is my bet, Richard, and I very much hope you're right. <laughs> so thank you for joining us for Share Talk. Um, please, can you press like and subscribe to the channel? And we hope to see you again soon. So it's goodbye from Richard Wheater. And uh, goodbye from Keith Jordan. Goodbye. Yeah. Full disclaimer. The material and information contained in this podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon for making a business, legal or any other decision. We may own or have a financial interest in any securities mentioned. Listeners should conduct their own research or consult a professional investment advisor before making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. Whilst we endeavour to ensure that the information presented on the show is correct, we make no representations or warranties of any kind, expressed or implied, with respect to the podcast and website or to any information, products, services or related graphics discussed or presented in the podcast or website. Any reliance you place on such material is strictly at your own risk. You are solely responsible for the investment decisions you make. We will not be responsible for any errors or omissions in the podcast or website, including in articles or postings, for hyperlinks embedded in messages or for any results obtained from use of such information. Nor will we be liable for any loss or damage, including consequential damages, if any, caused by a reader's reliance on any information provided by the podcast or website. Please do not listen to the podcast if you do not accept self-responsibility for your actions.